All right, we're recording. All right. So this week, Christy and I are going to talk about healthier eating guidelines. They are the next step, I guess, in the process that um, we're following in our habits. And I don't know, for me, healthier eating guidelines, it, it's sort of like we talk about in our culture what we eat, what we eat, what we eat, what we eat. And I feel like the healthier eating guidelines starts to talk more about when, how, no. why, mm -hmm. and it brings in all that side of um, food. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what's your thought process on that? I completely agree. And I think it's, it is moving more into awareness of our, what we are putting in, in what way we are putting in the food, right? How, what, where, why, um, so that it's not just about what is it we're eating, or that isn't even an English sentence, sorry, <laughs> what we're eating, but all the other things that come along with it and bringing that mindfulness component in yeah. and refining the habit. And so I was just saying that, you know, it, there is a lot in this chapter. Mm -hmm. And so it is really about looking at your eating habits and let's start to really refine them. Let's hone in. Let's see where these, you know, where you're at and what small changes can be made to start to move in a different direction or refine a direction, right? Mm -hmm. And right now it's almost more than that. I mean, we're supposedly going into a spring season soon. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the season where Ayurveda would support a detox. There's also a shift in foods that Ayurveda suggests as we move into spring. I, I don't feel that physically yet. The, mm. Everything about our season is still screaming winter. Um, although that we know that can shift very quickly here. Mm -hmm. There's also something about the, the detoxification that food can have in all the layers of your body. So in all your koshas, it's almost like food does have this ability to help you get clarity in your physical body, like literally just clean stuff out. Mm -hmm. And that clarity then in your physical body, I think has a resonance in your mental state mm -hmm. and in your emotional state. And it is one of, it is, I think it is one of the key things that can help us level up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree completely. So in that way, like healthier eating guidelines can be these little tweaks Sweets. or they can be the opportunity to take on a bigger detox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that both of those approaches are good at different times and for different people. Yeah. Because I think the idea with a detox, it's short. And so it's not something that's supposed to be sustainable long term, but you really change the habit up and you really focus for um, a limited amount of time and really discipline yourself. But we all know that's not sustainable. Yeah. So after that or before that, you know, making the small changes, because when you make those small changes consistently, then when you do that detox period, it's not as intense. It's not so overwhelming because yeah. by tweaking a little bit all the time, then preparing yourself for that. And when you come out of it, then you're going back to those habits. They're there, right? So you're putting yourself on end and it gives you kind of more power and strength to undertake something a little bit more intense for a shorter period of time. So I'm feeling in my body right now that I, I'd love to think about a detox in the next month or two. I'm going to wait till I feel like the season change is, is happening and it's weird mm -hmm. to try and catch that here. But um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, my body is craving something like that. But at the same time, I, um, everyone in this group is going to be able to bring in these guidelines as they like. Mm -hmm. So some of the big some of the big suggestions from Ayurveda come around um, when to eat, right? Mm -hmm. And there's this, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of different concepts in our world right now around um, 
having six smaller meals and snacking and, and having something right before you go to bed to really uh, hold you over till the morning or that. And those, that's against everything Ayurveda believes. Yeah, it's quite fascinating, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I think for that, and reading Kate's chapter on this, um, is really coming to understand your constitution. Yeah. So if you don't know it, then starting to do some of those quizzes to see what it is, right? And then maybe talking to somebody more about to really make sure that you've got it because that will give you some ideas on how you can start to shift when you're eating that's going to support your constitution. Right. Right. And then hopefully, because it's lots of people who are doing smaller meals throughout the day or, you know, eating, you know, right before something small, right before dinner to help ground them, move them into sleep. Um, that can be hard to change. And so looking at your constitution and being like, oh, here's her guidelines or here's some other guidelines that we can start to look at so that it feels like we're working with ourselves as opposed to against ourselves. I think maybe that's one of the biggest rules, right? Is if we can work with ourselves and not against ourselves, right? Yeah. So there, um, like the idea of being able to go into those guidelines Eat, eat less times a day, have less, mm -hmm. like cut snacks out and just try and oscillate. And I guess even noticing the oscillation, the, the difference between emptiness and fullness. Yeah. And being able to appreciate emptiness mm -hmm. and appreciate fullness. Um, I think there was other words there that, uh, allowing for time for digestion in your body and then having time for rest yeah. and being able to know that your body needs both of those things, the rest yeah. and the digestion. And then I guess the same as emptiness and fullness, hunger and feeling satiated mm -hmm. and allowing for that dichotomy to happen in your body where I yes. feel hunger. And there's nothing alarming about that. I don't have to like, ah, I'm not in a society or anything where that feeling has to elicit some sort of like immediate response. I can sit in hunger. And according to your dosha, some people can sit longer there than others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. That's just really listening to those signals in the body because part of I think I told you going back to that earlier, later dinner, um, shaped how then the rest of my meals played out. And it started to stabilize my blood sugar as opposed to having to eat every two hours. I was stretching longer and longer. And so my blood sugar stabilized and I wasn't getting those, um, that it was a weird hunger and it, but it wasn't, it was more like, well, my blood sugar was all off, right? right. It, I wasn't actually hungry. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm actually back to those hunger signals, but without the blood sugar right. cravings. So it's so fascinating to see how we, we can shift this slowly, right? So this is one then this habit starts to be even more important that you are respecting what you're finding and hearing inside, which is maybe why it's, you know, week eight, seven or eight. Mm -hmm because it's important that you're tuned into listening to your own your own system because it's not like we can throw out just try it and see how it goes sort of thing it, there's a little bit more subtlety to this one yeah so it really is about now we're really refining so you have the basic habits now that are helping you to you know tune in and listen to how your body's feeling and now it's like okay let's refine that let's refine how we eat, when we eat, why we're eating. And then that, that requires um, a much more subtle listening and mm -hmm. responding even. Mm -hmm. So some of, the, some of the guidelines that Kate gives mm -hmm. for this one, um, eat only two or three times a day when you're hungry, not when you're bored or thirsty or mad. 
Take only water without ice between your meals. Let your digestion rest. Eat fresh, not leftover food. Mm -hmm. Have gratitude for your food. Mm -hmm. Don't eat when you're emotionally distracted. Don't eat when you're multitasking. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your food. Have the six tastes. Relax after eating. Eat higher nutrient foods. Slow down to have a satisfying midday meal. Eat a lighter dinner and digest before you go to bed. Have a 13 hour break between your last meal and your break fast in the morning. Be like Goldilocks, find just the right amount to eat so you don't stretch your stomach or need to eat too frequently. Um, there's a few more. But then she sort of says, find the two that you suck at, that you, the rules that you break the most often and just play with those two. Mm -hmm. So what are those for you? Um, lunch being slow enough and um, mm -hmm. nutrient filled enough. Mm -hmm. 13 hours is getting to be pretty easy for me. Um, then don't eat when I'm emotionally distract distracted or multitasking. Mm -hmm. That's my other one. Still one that I can work on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You? Definitely the emotional or distracted one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what I want to work on is that idea of taking those six tastes into my midday meal. Oh. Because, yes. well, I actually don't take it in all of my meals, <laughs> but I'm trying to look at that. And I find it fascinating because I find that foods that I crave, if I was getting, and that's why it's designed, if you're getting those six tastes, then that cuts down on your cravings. And yeah. wow, that makes so much sense. <laughs> I know how brilliant that they actually, that that is part of, you know, their whole just perception of food and nourishment and supporting your body, supporting your breath, your mind through food and what you eat when you eat. And so that's something that I really want to look at. And yeah. There's a relationship that I notice between if coffee is the first thing that goes in my mouth during the day mm -hmm. and then what my body wants next. And mm -hmm. if lemon water is the first thing that goes in my body during the day mm -hmm. and what I want next. And what I notice acutely is that when coffee goes into my body first thing, then I can want a piece of toast with peanut butter and jam on it, or I can want that bagel and cream cheese. And there's something carby that my mm. body wants when I start with coffee. Mm -hmm. When I choose lemon water, lemon water, so I get the bitter first mm -hmm. thing in the morning, then the, what my palate wants is way cleaner. It's way cleaner. It wants mm. a cream smoothie or it wants um, avocado and an egg, no toast. It wants uh, oatmeal with... Um, Interesting. Yeah. And so I, I do play with that idea because I, I've, noticed, I've noticed clearly that mm -hmm. I'm better off. My next decision is better when I start with lemon water than if I start with coffee. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So we were just talking about non-negotiables. Yeah. And that hot water first thing in the morning, non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. So even if I can't have hot, like if I'm traveling or something's happening and I can't have hot water, I will still put a full glass of water in my system before I have a tea or a coffee. Yeah. And even if that means boiling water for the coffee and drinking the glass of water, but that's a non-negotiable because I find that that needs to go into my system first. Yeah. That's what I found on my three weeks away, I had two weeks where hot water was no problem to access. So it was easy to have the lemon water in the morning. And my third week, it was hard because I didn't have a kettle in my room. My hotel doesn't have a kit, like a kitchen or breakfast area. And the nearest place didn't have anything open until eight o'clock. So water, it was almost like I would in the evening, go find someone who would fill me up with hot water so that I could drink this in the morning and not, it might not even be really that warm anymore, but yeah, that's what I had to do is set it up the night before. So that, that was the first thing in my body. It yeah. is a good non-negotiable, that one. Yeah. And then and it, it does, it sets the tone for the day. 
right? So if you can find that one little healthier eating guideline that help, helps you set a tone for better decisions for the rest of the day, it's worth it. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there any of the other ones that you wanted to like talk about? The six tastes, um, they're bit, that's big. It's almost like a whole conversation it's to itself. Totally. And I mean, I don't even know enough about it to um, talk about super knowledgeably. So that's something that I want to do more research on. I know the basics of it, but more how to incorporate the little things. And I see why they put, you know, yogurt with your kitchery or yeah. some chutney with your kitchery and things like that so that they're, the tastes are balanced. But it's something that I, you know, want to look on, look more on my own and see. But the other ones, I mean, they just, they make sense. They make sense. Mm -hmm. they make sense. And it is about small baby steps, right? Yeah. And just looking at what seems most manageable. What can I, you know, look at? Um, and what small changes can I make? So I think it's good. The, there was one other sentence or idea that really struck me. And that was that your um, digestive system, your stomach, even starting at the beginning, should be one third water, mm -hmm. one third food, and one third space, because the space is necessary for yeah. the digestion, right? Mm -hmm. And just that idea that we don't have to, fullness or satiation doesn't have to mean my stomach is full of That's, food. Yeah. And then you start to think about your stomach's this big. When's the last time I only had that much food on my plate? Which is very interesting to think about. It's super interesting to think about. Like we, I feel like as a society, we could, and I, I, and I do, I feel like as I'm playing with these habits, my body needs less, way mm -hmm. less than I'm giving it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that whole idea, then it'll take a lot of pressure off the system, right? Your whole system. Yeah. yeah. And as you take the pressure off the system, that energy that you're using for digestion becomes available for other things. Yes. Which is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only other thing they talked about in this chapter was sort of the tongue. They talked about how your, um, your whole digestive system was like a snake mm -hmm. and your tongue and your mouth was like the head of the snake and your anus was like the tail of the snake and this snake goes through your whole body as your digestion and that your tongue is a map of that digestive system yeah and this is this is where my understanding of things it's like ah I'm not there yet I don't know this piece very well but if you scrape your tongue and you can get rid of all of the buildup and stuff on that tongue then you can start to see the map more clearly of what's going on in your body and you start to see daily changes of what's going on on that map. Mm -hmm. So that might be one of the things that I get to take out of the next round is mm. of this one is, could I start to watch my tongue and understand what it is? There's lots of support for that in, um, in the course, in the, in the documents. So mm -hmm. it's awesome. And I do, I scrape my tongue every morning and I look at it. Um, and I'm trying to start to put together correlation between things and I can't right now. Right. But just seeing what's happening. Oh, and my, are you still there? I, yeah, kind of, I'm still here. You're kind of getting, okay. My battery's dying. So I'm just going to plug my computer in and it should. <laughs> One thing I find about I'll, I'll talk until you come back. If we get if we get Christy back, she her computer just died. Um, when I scrape my tongue, kind of where I'm at is that I see how much gunk comes off or how much gunk doesn't come off. And right now, that's all I'm judging myself on is did lots of gunk come off, or did that seem pretty clean today? And that's the benchmark that I'm judging by. So I think we've lost Chrissy, but uh, we had a good conversation. So we will talk to you next week when we move into our sense organ care habits and enjoy healthy eating guidelines. Tough, very worthwhile. Bye.